Howdy y'all, and welcome to the Lone Star Plate. Today, we're talking about a critter that's got folks from ranches to city halls all across Texas on high alert. It's called the New World Screw Worm, and it's one nasty pest we thought we got rid of decades ago. But now, there's a real concern that it might be making a comeback. This flesh-eating worm starts out as a fly with bulging orange eyes and a shiny blue-green body. It lays its eggs in the tiniest cuts or scratches on livestock. Before you know it, those eggs hatch into maggots that burrow deep into the animal's flesh, causing severe pain and even death if left untreated. For our hard-working Texas ranchers, an outbreak of screw worms could spell disaster not just for their cattle, but for their livelihoods. And that's why we're here today, to break down this threat and see if paws and cattle imports can help keep this menace at bay. So saddle up and let's dive in. All right, folks, let's get up close and personal with this pest. The New World screw worm fly is easy to spot if you know what you're looking for. It's got bulging orange eyes and a metallic blue-green body that almost looks shiny in the sunlight. But don't let its flashy appearance fool you. This fly is bad news. The real trouble starts when the female fly lays her eggs. She targets any open wound on an animal, no matter how small. These eggs hatch into tiny white larvae, also known as maggots. These little critters have a voracious appetite and will burrow deep into the flesh of the animal, causing severe pain and infection. If left untreated, this infestation can be fatal in just a week. Now, here's a bit of history for you. The New World screw worm was eradicated from Texas back in 1982, thanks to a massive effort involving the release of sterilized male flies. But while we've been screw worm free for over 40 years, these pests are still common in parts of South America and the Caribbean. In these regions, the screw worm continues to be a significant problem, affecting both livestock and occasionally even humans. And with recent sightings near the Mexico-Guatemala border, there's a real concern that these pests could be inching their way back into Texas. So what does this mean for us here in the Lone Star State. Let's dig a little deeper into the recent sightings and why officials are so concerned. Now let's talk about the recent sightings that have got everyone from ranchers to wildlife officials on edge. The New World screw worm has been spotted near the Mexico-Guatemala border, and it's been steadily spreading north. Over the past couple of years, we've seen these pests pop up in Costa Rica, Honduras, and most recently, Chiapas, Mexico, which is right on our doorstep. This northward march is alarming because it brings the screw worm closer to Texas with each passing day. If these pests cross the border, it could spell disaster for our livestock industry and even pose a risk to human health. So how does an infestation actually happen? It all starts with a tiny wound on an animal could be a scrape from barbed wire or a small cut. The female screw worm fly lays her eggs in that wound, and within a day, those eggs hatch into larvae. These larvae then burrow deep into the flesh, feeding on the living tissue. The animal becomes restless, shows signs of distress, and if not treated quickly, the infestation can become fatal in just a week. The symptoms are pretty gruesome, You'll see large open wounds filled with wriggling maggots, and there's a distinctive foul odor that accompanies the infestation. It's a nightmare for any rancher to deal with, and it's not just livestock at risk. While it's rare, humans and pets can also become hosts for these parasites. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have reported an increase in human and animal cases in Central America where the screw worm was previously controlled. This makes it all the more crucial to keep these pests from crossing into Texas. So 
What are we doing to prevent this? Let's look at the measures being taken to keep the screw worm at bay. All right, folks, let's dive into the measures being taken to keep the New World screw worm from making a comeback here in Texas. The USDA has stepped up in a big way, dedicating $165 million in emergency funds to tackle this issue head on. This funding is crucial for ramping up efforts to monitor and control the spread of these pests. One of the most significant steps taken has been the temporary halt on Mexican cattle imports. This move aims to prevent any infested livestock from crossing into the U.S. and spreading the screw worm further north. While this halt has disrupted trade, it's seen as a necessary measure to protect our livestock industry. The USDA is also coordinating closely with Mexican officials to set up pre-export inspection facilities. These facilities will ensure that cattle are thoroughly inspected for signs of screw worm infestation and treated with insecticide before they even reach the U.S. border. It's a proactive approach to stop the problem before it starts. Now let's talk about what Texas officials are doing on the ground. The Texas Animal Health Commission is monitoring livestock herds across the state, keeping a close eye out for any signs of infestation. They're also working hard to raise public awareness, urging ranchers and outdoor enthusiasts to report any suspicious cases immediately. Public awareness campaigns are crucial in this fight. The more people know about the signs and symptoms of screw worm infestation, the quicker we can act to contain any outbreaks. The temporary halt on Mexican cattle imports has certainly shaken things up in the cattle trade. This disruption has slowed the flow of cattle between Mexico and the U.S., creating a bottleneck at the border. As a result, we're seeing potential rises in beef prices, which could affect both ranchers and consumers alike. This halt has set off a chain reaction in the livestock markets. With fewer cattle entering the U.S., feedlots are seeing slower placements, which isn't helping prices. Despite rising costs, beef consumption has stayed steady since 2021. But the big question is, could the screw worm threat finally spoil Americans' appetite for beef? The Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association has expressed concern over the current trade shutdown. While they acknowledge the negative short-term impacts, they believe the long-term consequences of a screw worm outbreak would be far worse. They've praised the USDA's efforts to control the pest and restart trade at the border. On the other hand, Texas Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller has been vocal about his concerns. He's criticized the USDA's response, calling it an overreaction and warning that the halt will hurt both ranchers and consumers by driving beef prices even higher. Miller argues that the existing quarantine and inspection measures should be sufficient to catch any infested cattle. All right, folks, let's look ahead and talk about the future outlook. The potential for a screw worm outbreak in Texas is a serious concern. But rest assured, we've got plans in place to tackle it head on. Monitoring and preparedness are key. Texas officials are keeping a vigilant eye on livestock herds, especially in areas close to the border. Early detection is crucial. The quicker we can identify an infestation, the faster we can respond to contain and eradicate it. Ranchers are being urged to report any suspicious wounds or unusual behavior in their animals immediately. Public awareness campaigns are also ramping up to ensure everyone, from ranchers to outdoor enthusiasts, knows what to look for and how to report it. The more eyes we have on the ground, the better our chances of catching an outbreak early. 
Long-term solutions will require continued cooperation between U.S. and Mexican authorities. Both countries are working together to set up pre-export inspection facilities and ramp up the production of sterile screwworm flies. This collaborative approach is essential for keeping the screwworm at bay and ensuring the safety of our livestock. We may also need to look at possible adjustments to trade policies. While the temporary halt on Mexican cattle imports has been a necessary step, finding a balance that protects our livestock while minimizing economic disruption will be crucial. Ongoing dialogue and cooperation between trade partners will be key to developing effective, long-term solutions. So, as we move forward, staying vigilant and prepared will be our best defense against the screw worm. Together, we can protect our livestock and keep Texas screw worm free. And remember, you heard it here on the Lone Star Plate.